make me hear joy and gladness that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then, Taylor, then, then, then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. And if they turn and say, neighbor, neighbor, he was with me in my past. He was with me in my past. He's with me in my present. He's with me in my present. He'll be with me in my future. In my future. May be seated. You may be seated in the house this morning. As we walk into the Lenten season, even Ash Wednesday, I want to preach you the topic, beloved. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. As we walk into the Lenten season, we must continuously understand what it means to have a serious time of spiritual reflection. This is exactly what Lent is all about. Here is the background of it. Lent, the term Lent, comes from the Anglo-Saxon word Lenten, which means spring. This is a season that prepares us to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and spring into our faith in a brand new way. The end result will always be better than the beginning when you have faith in God. In this season, we're grabbing after new insights, new joy, and new love with new understanding in Him. We are not entering into this season immaturely, but we want to hear from God, and so we must be serious about our actions toward God. Tell your neighbor, this is a serious matter. This is a serious matter. Here's the reality of this season, Asbury. As we spiritually reflect, we must understand how sinful we really are. I know we come here on first Sundays with our nice white on the altar, looks pretty and sanctified. The truth is, every one of us is sinful. Wow. And see, here's the thing, this is what I know, Sister Donnie, no one wants to preach about sin in our churches. Folk want to hear ear-tingling sermons right. that make you feel good for the week ahead. Don't nobody want to hear about how sinful they really are. Nobody wants to hear how they messed up in the eyesight of God. I'm not talking about how you messed up in front of somebody else or, or how somebody else made you angry, but I'm talking about how you you messed up in the eyesight of God. Because at the end of the day, Asbury, that's the one I'm worried about. That's the one who I wake up in fear and trembling of, not in the opinions of other people, but if I have failed God in my sins. See, here is the thing, Asbury. Churches want to have a hallelujah shouting good time and think they had church. And let me come get you. I do not mind you shouting, jumping, or dancing. Just know there must be change happening in your life right. after right. the benediction. Yes. Let me come get you. You can't stay this way forever. I don't care how long you've been a member of Asbury. Listen, I don't care how old you are of me. Folk tell me all the time, Mr. Dear, I got children and grandchildren your age. All that simply tells me that you've been nasty 30 years ago, but you're nasty and angry now, and you're probably nasty and full of sin tomorrow. There must be change in your life. Don't you dare think you don't need changing. Huh? See, every now and then, you got to reflect, Asbury, on how sinful you really are. Yeah, right. You're not perfect. You're not without fault. You're not without blemish. You've got to admit when you're wrong. And the truth is, Asbury, if it wasn't for God's grace and God's mercy and his love for us, we would live in an eternity in hell. You would have an appointment with the devil every day for eternity. 
truth is, as there is, yes, I'm full of sin, but God. I am a mistake maker, but God. I still deserve the worst in my life, but God. I don't even represent him well on a consistent basis, but God. And this is why, Sierra, you should never take the presence of God in your life for granted. Yes, I know God gives us the best when, when we deserve the worst, but don't abuse the situation. Hey, hey. Because of God, I know who I can become. And so I dare not spit God in God's face after he blesses. God has better. God wants us to do better. He, he wants us to do better with who we are in the faith. Because of God, I can press in my praise and worship. Because of God, I can see myself in a better spot than where I was last year. Because of God, listen, I don't mind sacrificing. I don't mind giving up a few things now uh, for him because I will gain so much more in the long run. Let me rewind the tape for you, as well. And I know a lot of this explanation sounds nice, it sounds religious, and it is theologically sound, but the truth is, uh, how many of us truly want to sacrifice? No one really wants to sacrifice. Please don't try to sit up here holy looking and breezy and pious on your communion Sunday acting as if you are okay with God sacrificing the very thing you like, sacrificing the very moment you love, sacrificing the thing you work hard on. Why are we so backwards in church? See, see no one wants to eat right but folk want to say, I want to lose weight. <laughs> folk overspend their money but they claim they want to save money for retirement. <laughs> we say one thing but we do another. And this is why Asbury, I look forward to the Lenten season. It puts my spiritual growth into perspective. It shows how we all need to take a humble pill and never think too highly of ours. I'm going to hurt everybody. It lets me know that I need to put my faith in God in every area of my life and not look so saved on Sunday morning and I get amnesia for the rest of the world. Now I can understand, Brother Wanda, why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. I'm ready for this season. I'm ready to sacrifice. So as we walk through Psalm 51, we must understand today that we are witnessing the evolution of the faith of David. The man after God's own heart has finally decided to make a true sacrifice of himself and his life unto God. The text teaches how David recalled God showing him mercy in the past. Now David can praise God in his present and because God has been so good to David in the past and in the present. Watch this, y'all. David can trust God for the future. The reality of life, as Mary, is that many of us have trust issues. Yes. Oh, yes. Many of us don't trust people. Yes. If they do something nice for you on Sunday, you question it by Sunday night. <laughs> if a man take you out to dinner, you think he wants something in return. <laughs> if a woman pays you a compliment, you think it's something up. <laughs> we got trust issues with people. But you should not have trust issues with God. And so this is what Lent does for me, Brother Malloy. It encourages my trust in God to grow. See, Lent causes you to spiritually take a look at yourself and forces you to stare at the reflection and trust God to change your life for the better. 